In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Right around Easter, I finally broke down and got a new phone. My old phone was four years old. I had gotten it because I washed my previous phone on Easter Sunday morning with my laundry. It happens. And you know that four years in phone years is 125 years in people years, right? So, so it was just time. It was shutting down functions. It was overloaded. I don't know what, but it was an unhappy phone. So I, I have to admit to you that I was probably a Luddite in another life. And, you know, technology does not come easy to me. So I went to the guy at the phone store, and I told him that. And he said to me, ma'am, do you think you can swap? And I said, what is swipe? And he said, he said, now your phone has a button to turn on, but the new phones swipe. Do you think you can swipe? Okay, I'm not that bad. All right? I am not that bad. Now, it's true that it's taken me weeks to figure out the new phone. And I'd get all my apps on there and figure out how it works and all the nuances of this new technology. The thing that's hardest is you can't plug in your earbuds to these new phones. You know, you need Bluetooth technology. And my son Jacob for Mother's Day got me Bluetooth technology. And my son Martin recently taught me how to use Bluetooth technology. Incidentally, with the same voice as the salesman at the phone store. Mom, are you paying attention? This is how you turn it on. I'm not that bad. But I was using it the other day for the first time to take my morning walk so I could listen to music while I was walking. And, and I was a little anxious about how it was going to work out. And, you know, I was kind of paying attention to that. You know, what is it about this technology? What is it about this change that's so aggravating or, or upsetting to me, you know? Truth is, I don't want to be like my parents who for whom technology is just overwhelming, you know? I mean, my dad, when I would show him Facebook, he's like, how do they do that? You know, or, or I'd order something on, the, on my phone to have delivered to their house. And they, how do you do that? I don't understand. I mean, it, it's just totally beyond them. And, you know, for people who are like that, I love you too, but, but I, want, I, I want to be careful about becoming that person, you know? I want to be a person who can change. I want to be a person who can grow. So what is it about technology that gets me? And I think it's fear. I think I'm afraid I'm not up to it. I think, what if I can't do this, you know? What if it is really too much for me? What if I can't manage this new thing? I mean, I like change when it works for me. You know, I like change that I like. But the changes that I don't want, like, they're going to phase out checks. That upsets me. You know, I don't want that change. And that, you know, and, and I think it's because there's a little insecurity, right, about, about how you manage these new things. Because change is so constant. It's not going to stop because I don't want it. Now, the blessing of my life is that I live in a community, right? And I bring gifts and talents. They don't have anything to do with computers, home maintenance, or cars. But I bring gifts and talents to this community and... Other people bring their gifts and talents. So we kind of cover each other, right? But it still bothers me. It's still in the back of my mind. What if I can't do this? Now, in the gospel today, Jesus is giving his farewell discourse. And he's telling his disciples, I am going to leave you. And imagine how they felt. Imagine the abandonment and the fear that they felt. And Philip says what they're probably all thinking. Give me something to hold on to. Give me something concrete. Give me something. If you're going to leave, give me something. And Jesus said, I have given you something. I've given you my example. I've given you the behavior, the, the, the relationships, the change, the miracles. I've given you all of that. What you need to do is believe. You need to believe. And if you believe, Jesus says, I will give you the power to do more than even I've done. Anything you ask for in my name will be yours. You will be able to do it. Terrifying, right? I'm sure that that did not 
increase their, their level of comfort, in other words. But then he says, but I'm going to give you an advocate. I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a companion who will be with you in all this, who will help you to figure this out. It'll be okay. I won't be here, but I will send you an advocate. And in the first reading from Acts of the Apostles, we hear about that. We hear about the day that the advocate, the Holy Spirit, comes. Great job on the place names. I think that's the hardest reading in the entire church year. Very well done. I've had people ask me to change dates to avoid that reading. Yeah. Not you. So we see the disciples. They're in that upper room. They are, they're, the doors are locked, you know. They're afraid. And the Holy Spirit comes and doesn't just shake them up, but practically burns the place down, you know. There's tongues of fire. There's wind. There's people speaking in languages they've never spoken before. It's an amazing thing. It shakes everybody up. Not just the people in the room, but the people outside who are kind of wondering what's going on in there. Are those people drinking? <laughs> but someone has the courage to ask. And in that moment, their fears are gone. Their courage is back. And Peter goes out and he quotes to them the prophet Joel. And he says, God is doing this incredible new thing that's going to allow every person in this new kingdom to be prophets and dreamers, and visionaries. God is doing this new thing for you. And all of a sudden, the disciples realize that their lives are never going to be the same. Welcome to your new life in Christ. So they have to figure that out. It's a brand new role for them. It's a brand new way of looking at things for them. And so Paul says to the Christians in Rome, he says, you have to switch roles here. You are no longer enslaved to something that you are out of control of. You are now a child of God. You are a son or a daughter of God. You are an, an inheritor of the promises of eternal life and eternal love. And to do that, you have to live into being the brother of Jesus. You have to live into your body, the body of Christ, which means that life is going to be hard sometimes. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be suffering. But you will receive your inheritance. You will receive eternal life and love. I think that a lot of times we're in that upper room with the door closed, and we're thinking, I don't know about this. I don't know what's coming. I don't know how to deal with the world. It's so much nicer in this room, so much safer in this room with the doors locked. And Jesus, we, we don't know where you are. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's coming. And doing things that you did seem very unlikely to me. And maybe, like I said before, a little terrifying. And so it's so easy to stay in that upper room. And furthermore, Jesus, what if we're not good enough? What if we can't do it? What if the thing you ask me to do is more than I can handle? What if I can't do it? Our life in Christ is filled with that insecurity, filled with that fear. That is why we celebrate Pentecost. That is why we say, come Holy Spirit. Because with our advocate, Filling our hearts. We know we are given everything we need to do the work that we're given to do in the world. We know that we are not alone, that we are empowered, and that we are sometimes shoved from behind, but we are given all that we need. And pretty soon we're going to walk out that door. And that world's a hard place. There's a lot of pain and hardship and discouragement in that world. And we, filled with joy, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the knowledge that we are not alone, are ready to go out into that world and bring the love of Jesus Christ.